Shinjuku. Three and a half million people every day make their way through Shinjuku Station, making it the world's busiest. Thousands of restaurants packed around the over 200 exits. This urban maze is the city's most complicated and also the most fun, if you can find your way out. For tonight's Tokyo food adventure packed with amazing Japanese dishes from sushi and tempura to wagyu and sake. So here we are in Shinjuku, in the part of Tokyo that simply never sleeps. Look at the lights around us. There are thousands of restaurants, bars, and cafes here, which can be quite intimidating for those that are coming to Japan for the first time. Where do you go to eat? In this episode, I'm going to be taking a tour with a local guide to help me find the perfect places in this maze, this chaos that is Shinjuku. This is the Shinjuku food adventure. Let's go! I've decided to take a tour, meeting my guide in East Shinjuku to get to know the area and food. This is Sho, a local guide at Magical Trip and Shinjuku expert. We're off to the first food stop through the bright streets of East Shinjuku's most notorious neighborhood, Kabukicho. This neighborhood offers everything, nightlife, restaurants, bars, hostess clubs, game centers, karaoke, a playground for adults. I've been on a few other Magical Trip local tours around Japan, always had pretty authentic experiences and since Sho lives here, I was looking forward to this one. Someone else leading the way and me eating my way to the other side. It's an izakaya, Japanese style pub with a very large menu. The inside, clean, stylish, very Japanese, which fits the food we're about to eat. There's a special foodie menu that allows you to eat a lot. We could be here all night, so I decided to get everything. This is going to be a lot of fun. The staff gets to work. You can see them preparing the food in the kitchen on all sides. I can smell the grilling unagi in the corner. One of their specialties is this, sushi. While they cooked, our drinks came. Japanese getting off work almost always start off with a nama biru, beer cold from the tap. Then the food came, fast. It's a tour of the best of Japanese cuisine. Nigiri sushi, can you name them all? Ah, and this, vegetable tempura. Soba noodles, a taste of the countryside. Cold dipping soup made of dashi. Add the wasabi and leeks to it grilled tofu, and shiitake mushrooms. Soft tofu with ginger and leeks. Maki sushi with vegetables and soba noodles in there. Dip it in a little soy sauce and enjoy. Unagi, char-grilled freshwater eel slathered in a tangy sauce that complements the tender meat very well. A sophisticated miso soup, this one with beef. And this, compliments of the chef. Wow, this is a lot of food. Show, I think we ordered too much. Way too much, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Now, typically, all the food won't come at once. Uh, usually, it'll come course by course. Exactly. But for the purpose of this video, I think it's really cool to see it all on one table. Where do you start in a course like this? Well, first, you gotta try the big Edo Sushi. Edo Sushi from the Edo era when they were a street food, served at Yatai food stands in the city back when Tokyo was still called Edo in the 19th century. They're made larger to make a meal, almost like an onigiri rice ball. Rather than use rice vinegar like the smaller nigiri sushi, Edo sushi mixes red vinegar into the rice, made from sake kasu, the leftovers from the pressed rice and sake production. This makes the sushi rice a little brownish red color instead of white. So I guess I'll go in for this anago here first. This is big. <laughs> wow. And one more thing, you can put the soy sauce, I mean like soy sauce. Oh, right. And also, you can use this, uh, this chili miso. I tried it with soy sauce, but there's a question I always wanted to ask a local. 
Ah, so is it common to add the wasabi into the soy sauce? Uh, I mean, like you can do that, but you are not supposed to do this. I always, I always wondered about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you eat the seafood bowl, you can put the wasabi into the soy sauce and mix with it and pour all over equally. Right. But when you eat sushi, you are not supposed to do this. Because if you mix with wasabi into the soy sauce, the wasabi flavor and the spiciness is gone. So it's better to just put the soy sauce and grab some, like a little bit wasabi onto the sushi. See, I'm always learning <laughs> something new. I bet you they put wasabi under this. Sometimes they put the wasabi yeah. on the rice right. so you don't need extra. No. Interesting. Dig into the soba noodles. With community food, you can turn your chopsticks around to pick up the food from the dry ends. Dip and slurp. The air helps to enhance the flavor. Tempura shrimp or ebitan. It's one of my favorites. Mm. Um, I love tempura. We love tempura. Oh yeah, because <laughs> if anything that's deep fried, you put that with an American together, it's perfect. But you know, there's always the image that Japanese food is super healthy. I don't know about tempura. Well, actually, like a tempura is originated from Portuguese. Ah. <laughs> so, but like you know, Japanese are like you know, they're good at making it better. Right. Tempura, even ramen, ramen from China. But yeah. Tofu has flavor itself, but the soy sauce adds a little saltiness to it, and the texture is an amazing contrast to the crispy tempura. Don't mind if I have one more of those for the road. You know, the diet starts tomorrow. We walk through Kabukicho towards the next place. This really is the brightest section of Tokyo, I think. All of these lights also means so many restaurants, doesn't it? Yes, a lot. You know, in, in Shinjuku world, there are over 5,600 wow. restaurants. Just around Shinjuku Station, it is said that there are over 1,500 restaurants, including cafes and bars. That's a lot, but how did it all start? Shinjuku means New Living Quarters. It was a post town on the 17th century route to Nagano called Koshukaido. This area opened in 1699, originally called Naito Shinjuku. Of course, it had hotels, food, entertainment, the first stop after Nihonbashi. It's only gotten bigger and brighter over the years with Tokyo's Metropolitan Government Headquarters right here. We're now down there in Kabukicho, a notorious area that has undergone big renovations over the last several years, offering many new attractions. Shinjuku. Yeah. For a first timer coming to Japan, I think walking around here, it is really hard to find a restaurant in particular, <laughs> unless you know exactly before we even come here where to go, to pick one out of a thousand. That's why we need a local guide, <laughs> right. I would say. Yeah. Ah, uh, here. Wagyu. <laughs> Can you guess what's on the menu here? And I was very pleased to see the beef tracking number right at the door. I think when you go to any yakiniku restaurant, in fact, any Japanese Wagyu beef steak place around the world, you should be able to see this number. This is the 10-digit the number that is uh, connected with the database that allows you to track where that Wagyu was born and where it was processed, all of that should be front and center, so you always know what you're getting. And we found it right at the front when you first enter the restaurant, very good sign. This is not just any brand of Wagyu either. It's Kagoshima Kuroge Wagyu from South Kyushu, the champion at the Wagyu Olympics held every five years. Kagoshima now the reigning champ, more than once. They take it pretty seriously here. I believe it's on par with Kobe beef, so you're getting an amazing meal. The marbling on this A5 grated beef is incredible. Kanpai. Kanpai, kanpai. The chef brings out four cuts and a plate of vegetables so you don't have to eat just meat here. Although you can if you want to. Vegetarian, this thing. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. The vegetarian one. The vegetarian, yeah. So like on the tour, the reason why we take the yakiniku place, I want, I want, I mean, we want the guests to try best wagyu in Shinjuku. So that's why 
we pick this place. And it didn't take long before it was on the grill. Wagyu beef can be eaten in so many ways. Shabu shabu, sukiyaki, steak, raw as sushi. As an accent in dishes like curry rice. Although a little pricey, it's worth trying when in Japan. The marbling giving each bite extraordinary tenderness. Eat slowly. About 120 grams is usually my limit. You, you want to eat oh, no, no, that's maybe. fine, yeah. Okay. You don't this salt plate is pretty cool. And some wasabi for a little bite. Wow. <laughs> Some hormone, offal or organ meat. This is part of the intestines. Okay, eat this one. Oh yeah, yeah. I recommend trying it once. It's popular in Shinjuku, and the oils really build up a flame. A little crunch with the fats, adding a light, oily chew. Crunchy. Crunchy, right? Mm. Two places already. The first one is sushi, and the second one was wagyu yakiniku. And tonight we are gonna end it up the. Sake tasting. Let's go. Well, like uh, here in Japan, uh, it's it, really common, and uh, go go out for drinking with colleagues, mm -hmm. and uh, even boss and even client after work. A so, lot of work gets done after work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like uh, west side of Shinjuku, there's the office area, a lot of, like uh, um, the buildings and something. So after work, they come to Kabukicho for drinking with ah. colleagues or boss or clients. It's a lot of fun and I think when you go out to drink and you eat in this region, you're, yeah. this area, you're, you're shoulder to shoulder with people that just got off of work. It's kind of an interesting experience, isn't it? It is. It is. It's <laughs> really good. All you walks know, of life in Shinjuku. Businessmen, students, tourists, local people, any kinds. I guess that's one of the attractions for you to yeah, come Yeah, exactly, here. exactly. And this is the place to, to get to know new people and, uh, you know, drink in and uh, talk to, like, you know, some new friends, I mean strangers, the tourists. I think this is a good place to make a friend, I guess. I, I think alcohol might play a big part in exactly. that. Because as I noticed when Japanese drink, they <laughs> yeah. also get really friendly. You make a lot of friends here. We went under the tracks to the old historic side of the city. The, uh, Saikyo line? No, it's a uh, Shona Shinjuku line. Ah, An old alley that defies father time. Preserving its Showa-era roots of post-war Tokyo, the shacks of Amoide Yokucho or Memory Lane is a living museum of close-quarter eating bars with character that depends as much on the owner as the food. Shono's a super local drinking spot for great sake. So this is our last place. We're going here, called Kikuya, an underground. The so basement. The basement, yeah. So we're going basement. Into the dungeons of old Shinjuku, where magic happens in little shot-sized glasses. Wow, I love these small, yes, little, out-of-the-way bars. This place has Japanese sake from around the country, many labels I've never heard of before, which made things really exciting. The first sake called Koe Giku from Saga Prefecture in Kyushu is unique. It's white, cloudy. Wait, what? The next one? We just got here. Wow. So because it's it's kind of fresh, there's a little bit of bubbles in there? Yes. It's still alive, kind of. Exactly. So it's a raw sake. Raw sake. Ah. It's still sweet. I like that. It's a little bit of a can, natural sweetness. You can see like something in here. Oh yeah, there's some things floating in there. This is a rice and the koji and a lot of stuff. Don't talk, drink, or fall behind because the third one. This Kyoto sake is red, like brandy. I heard it was an ancient recipe. Sake tasting can really challenge your palate, like wine. Wow. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sweet. It's got almost something in between sake and umeshu to me. Right, that's, it's that's like, right. Right? Actually, I like this. Mm, I do like it very much. Oh, one of the fun things about drinking sake quite often is the glass that it comes in. Look at that. Just this one is so smooth, isn't it? Dangerous. Right. We sipped quite a bit. It's fun to try new sake, take notes and compare when traveling, but sometimes you only have to go as far as Shinjuku, an old post town to get the riches of the country's wow. cuisine. What an amazing foodie adventure. Thank you to Magical Trip for planning this with a local guide who can also help you prepare the rest of your trip by giving you recommendations. Show told me of a ramen place just down the street for one last meal. Local guides like Show really do introduce you to hidden gems that aren't in any guidebook. There are a ton of other tours to check out with local guides on Magical Trip. Feels like you're going out with friends. If you liked it, check out another adventure on Only in Japan as I take it every single corner of this amazing country. Matane.